Hey guys, it's Chris Matakis, and so many people don't fulfill their potential on and off the mat, and I don't want you to be one of them, which is why we created this channel. I am a jiu-jitsu black belt, a school owner, and I've written 13 books about using jiu-jitsu as a vehicle for personal development. If you watch the ADCC and you are looking to glean some wisdom from all of the Hall of Fame inductees, this video is for you. We're going to cover the single underlying factor that seems to have led to all their successes based on the speeches they gave. So let's dive in because by the end of this video, you'll have a much different relationship to struggle. So we'll start with Cabrinha. This is a guy who won his weight class three times in a row. Now, I did not realize that prior to that, he lost in the finals back-to-back -back ADCCs. That means that he made it to the finals and lost, had to wait two years, made it to the finals and lost, and then that third ADCC is when he finally won, and then he won two more after that. And he shared like the emotional struggle of dealing with that failure and picking himself back up to ultimately reach the highest point. And then Braulio comes out, and you may not know this about Braulio, but he was partially paralyzed in training from a neck injury, and then won the ADCC years later after that. So the chasm between partial paralysis and all of the uncertainty abound to becoming one of the best grapplers in the world is so great. And it reminds us of a maxim, never meet your heroes, and why I think that is terribly wrong. Because when they say never meet your heroes, because you'll realize they're just a regular person with their own flaws. But also, they're a regular person who overcame struggles that you yourself deal with. When I look at a Braulio Esteem, a Cabrinha, it's very easy for me to like deify them as jujitsu greats, as, oh, they're the upper echelon, they figured it out, they're not like us. When you hear their struggles, you realize their path is not that different from ours. They had tremendous struggle, discomfort, failure, and disappointment, but they continued on. And how this translates to all the things that I love off the mat Carl Jung understood the hero myth better than just about anybody. And he noticed a trend that every hero had to go on a descent before the ascent. That there was always a struggle. There was always a period of uncertainty. There was always a period of great discomfort in the unknown that ultimately was the precursor to their ascension into who they were going to become. That you don't get to become great without first having struggled in the depths. And this was something that was a pattern that existed across all stories, all religions over time, but it's also a pattern that holds true with all the ADCC Hall of Famers. There was a descent before the ascent. We tend to only see them on the top of their mountain, and we don't realize the hike that led them there. And that hike is one that goes down really far that not a lot of people can survive. But it's those depths that ultimately allow those great heights. So what I took away from this was remembering, because we forget it so easily, that the best in the world are the ones that made it through the descent phase and pushed through the ascent phase. I think we kind of have this built-in mechanism where when we're in that descent, when times are difficult and hard, we feel like it's because we're not on the right path or we're not destined to be great and whatever our path is on our own unique single player game of life. What Cabrinha, Braulio Estima, and Carl Jung, those three have probably never been pulled together before, what they have given me is the blessing to recognize that, oh, if I'm in a descent, it's because the ascent is next that I don't get to the top of the mountain without first going to the bottom of the valley. And that holds true on the mat, that holds true in relationships, it holds true in your business and your passions and your profession. When you're in a descent, it is an indication that you are making progress. It's just not the progress you want because the way the game is laid out is that you have to fail first before you succeed. And when we get to meet our heroes, even if it's an interview on flow grappling, we realize that their path is archetypally no different from ours. There's a descent that precedes the ascent. So we need to hold on to that wisdom. When we're in our own struggle, whatever it is, that that is the necessary antecedent to us fulfilling our potential and achieving whatever goal it is that we're pursuing. So 
to pull all that together, like if life is hard and if training is going hard and if you're experiencing discomfort, rather than view it as a failure, I believe it's a success because you are taking the necessary steps in your evolution process on or and or off the mat that there's no way around. You have to descend before you ascend. So I believe that if we can change our relationship to the descent, the struggle, the injuries that keep us off the mat, the resistance we experience at work, if we can recognize that those are actually the gifts, they are the catalysts for our growth, we become nearly psychologically bulletproof because there will be an unbelievable amount of resistance in any path. Certainly, if you're walking a path uniquely your own that you are forging while walking, there is no shortage of resistance. The good news is that resistance is an indication that you are on the right path. That if you continually pursue that resistance forthrightly, you will fulfill the potential that exists for you and the prescription that's written on your heart. Now, whether that's on the mat or off the mat, the modus operandi is the same. When we're in resistance, it's a cue that we're on the right path and we just keep going. So I hope you keep going. And if this is useful for you, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. I would love to connect with you further and continue to use this channel to help you fulfill your potential on and off the mats because you deserve it and there's no reason why you can't have it. So until the next one, be well.